the main reason of being here is to learn how to translate our thoughts into a computer program. Uh, that's the main pur purpose of coming to college. So you'll be able to uh, look at the problem, identify what the problem is, then try to put it in sequence with uh, instructions so it can be followed pr properly and then you give it to a computer. As an analyst, if you are going to be one, um, your job would be to go talk to a client. Client's going to tell you this is my, uh, um, this is my uh, company. I want this and this to be done in my current company. I want these sequence of things to happen. I want my accounting to go on computer. I want my sales to go on computer. I want things like that. So they're going to tell you what they want to be done with a computer. Then you're going to sit with them for three months, two months, whatever it is, go through the detail of their business logic, and then put them in line, uh, organize them, and then hire the team of programmers and tell to the, each team of program that you are supposed to do this then, you are supposed to do this one, and so on and so forth. That's compared to what we're going to do right now. It's like that today we're going to talk about 2 plus 2 is 4. What I just told you is going to Mars, OK? It's uh, the final target of our. But the founding bricks of programming is to be able to organize your thought and be able to sequence yourself properly so the task in hand can be done correctly. Every single thing that you do in life happens in sequence. Every single thing that you do. Um, there's, there are no exceptions. If you want to come to school, you have to get to the door of your house, open the door, walk through the thing, then get to the bus stop. Um, go to the bus, get off at certain stuff, and come over here. To be able to come over here, you cannot first go to the bus, then open the door of, the, of your house. It's impossible. To come out, that's the first sequence. You have to open the door and get out. You cannot, without coming out of your house, go into the bus. It sounds stupid when I'm telling you, but that's reality. In a, in a computer, you have to do that. You have to be that precise in setting things in sequence, one by one, going through things. So you can uh, make a program work. Now, when we are dealing with a program, The most important thing in programming is to, when you are getting to a criteria, to be able to make decisions and take different approaches depending on, on what the situation is. It's very straightforward and, and simple. Okay? So decision making is the first thing that we need to learn in computer programming. How to make decisions and act based on uh, the events that are happening. OK, let's uh, do this again. So we are going to go define CRT. What is that? Right? Secure. Oh. Secure. <laughs> Why do I keep putting Q over there? Secure. No. Warning. OK? And then after that, we'll go include IO, uh, uh, standard input output. IO stream is C. <laughs> OK, so we are writing a, uh, the main function that doesn't receive anything from operating system. That's why it's void. And it returns an integer to the, to the OS that is always 0 in our case. All right. You're a bartender in a nightclub or wherever, OK? Somebody approaches you and wants a drink. Can I have a beer? First thing that you ask is, 
how old are you? Okay? And the person responds. If the person says 21, 30, they would give him a break, a beer, right? If the person says 17, then you're going to say, no beer for you, right? Get out of here, right? Very small sequence that you have to go through. Huh? <laughs> let's let's change that. Let's change the, uh, uh, the the program. Then you're a bouncer at the door of a club. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> there are all ages clubs that you can go, and there are bars over there, so you can go and dance, but you cannot get. I've I've seen something like that long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Okay. So, anyways. Yeah, so, so look at my include over there. Man, I am sick. Include. Okay. So, decision making in C language is pretty simple and straightforward. It happens with a command called if. Okay? The if command happens like this you do if. And in front of the if, you put a condition. The condition goes inside here, OK? If that condition is correct, the block that comes immediately after the if statement runs. You've already done a quiz on this, so you know what I'm talking about. All right? Now, this condition in the quiz, uh, in the quiz, condition in the if, what is it supposed to be for the if to run? What the condition inside if? Equal to one. That's not right. What, true. what is true? And logical. Or logical true. What is logical true? One or? What is true if you are checking something as a condition to validate it and see if it's true or false? C compiler says. Pass. Shush, it's not your turn. <laughs> yes, anything but zero. So remember that. So if that in an if statement, if you have anything but zero, it's considered true. But if you have a condition, then that's fine too. So if I have over here some kind of a variable of any kind, we know that that's the syntax. So if I have int a over here, 23, and I'll go a is uh, less than 25, then this is going to happen, right? So inside this thing is going to happen, whatever we do. We're OK with that, right? So we're going to use this. So we're going to say I'm going to create a, a variable. I'm going to call it age. And I'm going to say printf. So we are at the Swiss chalet. OK, there's a bar in Swiss chalet, <laughs> not a club. <laughs> you want to go get a beer from the bar in Swiss chalet. Then they're going to ask you, is that satisfactory? Yes. He's going to be a good programmer, right? So it's to, it, it, that's a good analysis, actually. As soon as I say, how did they get into the club? Yeah. So yeah. So the first thing that we're going to say is, what are we going to say? Welcome to Seneca Bar. <laughs> Welcome to Seneca Club bar, whatever, <laughs> all right? And the very first thing that we're going we're gonna to ask the, the person to, to tell us would be printf, how old are you, right? And immediately, I want to get the answer. I have a variable called age over there. I want to put the age in there. So what I'm going to do over here is to scan f an integer and put it in the What do you read that? Scan f percent the address of h, right? Address <laughs> Smart you didn't answer, eh? Okay, so address of h. So I'm going to put an address of h then after doing that, what do I do? Now I'll check. I'm going to say if age is greater than or equal to 19, what if we are in Quebec? That could have been 18, right? 
but they're in Ontario, so. So I'm going to say if age is greater than or equal to 19, what I'm going to say. What are we talking about here? Oh. Took, I think your teacher. Oh, uh, yeah, your teacher took it. So, oh, you just asked. Okay. Right. Oh. <laughs> okay. Times have changed. <laughs> okay. So, uh, printf, I'm going to say, uh, what would you like to drink? Right? So, if the age is, is, the, is not 19, which is less than 19, then the result would be printf, no drinks for you. And, How the heck did you get in? <laughs> right? So a question that you're actually asking. So if I have something like this, this is how if statements work in C language, which means the condition happens. If that condition is true, then inside the if statement happens. Now, if the age is less than 19, something else happens. So as a result, we have written a program that can imitate uh, a bartender. All right? So how do I walk through this and see how it works? It's very simple. You, uh, the most, like down to here, we know what happens. It, it, age is going to get created and welcome is going to happen. How old are you is going to happen. And then I want to write stand before scanf and start walking through this, right? So what you do, you get your mouse, and you move your mouse right to the left side of the line you want it to stop executing, and click over there. You see that red light? That's a stop sign. You're actually telling to the, your IDE to run the program and stop right over there. If you press Control F5, so if I come to debug, Control F5 says start without debugging. If you press Control F5, it just executes it, shows you the thing, and then you run it, right? Three years later, how old are you? I'm going to say I'm 12. No drinks for you. How the heck did you get in, right? And if I run it again, if I say I am, I don't know, uh, 34, then it's going to say, well, would you like to drink? I forgot to go to New Line, and so on and so forth. And the story continues, right? So. If I want to walk through, though, instead of Control F5, if you come to debug, you're going to see it says start debugging, and that's F5. If you press F5, it's going to run the execution and stop right at this line. Pop, you see? So it executed the program and stopped right over here and waits for your command. What to do next? Like this, you can ask Visual Studio and all the IDEs out there. Any integrated development environment has this capability. Okay? Any decent one. Okay? Not a text editor that runs a compiler. That's a different story. An IDE, all the IDEs have this capability. So let me just put this thing back where it's supposed to be and bring. All right. So now I'm going to make this a little smaller so we can actually see it. And then we'll bring it over here. So now I can actually move the mouse over the variables, and it's going to show me what the contents of the variables are. Yes? Uh, is it possible first the, the variable age initialize something? And, then and it is possible, but does it make sense? No. Does it make sense? Let's say no. If it doesn't make sense, then why? Yeah, it is possible. It is possible for me to slap myself in the face. Can I do it? Yeah. But would I do it? No. You want to say I'm crazy. OK? That's the thing. Should I initialize it? If for debugging purposes you want to show something or you have a purpose for it, sure. But in this case, 
I am overwriting the value in H with scanf. Why initialize it then? So although like I as a programmer, like as, as a beginner, when I started, I used to initialize everything ob obsessively. Like somebody who wants to wash the wash dishes again to make sure it's extra clean. <laughs> But if you do that, you're just confusing the person who's after you coming to debug. So when you initialize it, it says, OK, initialize it. Then why? Did he miss something? Wanted to do something with the age and he forgot? So doing something like that that is unnecessary makes the person debugging your code later on in doubt, puts them in doubt. OK? But, so it's better not to do. We will do it soon. You'll see. I will do it. I will initialize it when it's needed. Oh, yeah. And in this case, we don't need to. There is a rule for it. You know what is the rule? I'll tell you what's the rule. If the first thing that you are doing after using a variable to modify it, you have to initialize. What is the meaning of modification? Change the value, not overwrite. If you want to change the value, add 1 to it, reduce it by 1, multiply it by 6, divide it by 10. If you want to modify the value, then you have to initialize it. Because if you modify garbage, the result is unknown, right? But if the first thing you are doing with the variable is to wipe it out and put something else over it, an initialization is not needed. OK? Yes, sir. So uh, if you were to make a variable, like, that would increase by one every time. Yeah. That today, today we are in decision making and repetition. This, that's today's lecture. Decision making, repetition. And I'll, I'll show you that we don't need to know all the concepts in this logic lecture that you have over here. And as a matter of fact, some of them I may not even teach. And I'm going to insist to use only the basics. We'll come to it. Okay. So when I'm going to actually teach something over here, I'm going to say this concept is enough for you to do anything you want and see. Okay. Trust me on that. That is enough. Okay. But there, um, there are always several different ways of doing. Because you asked that question, then I have to explain. There are several different ways of doing the same thing in a language. Okay. You're going to see right now. We're going to get to a command. I'll tell you how the command works. Then I'm going to show you two different ways of doing that command. It's like you're going to, I don't know, in one of the fast food companies that you like. I hate them all. So Wendy's. OK, you go to Wendy's. You can either get the fries and a Coke and a hamburger or say I want combo number two, right? They're the same thing. The results, you're going to get the fries and a hamburger and a Coke. One is combo number two. The other one is in detail, right? So if you know how to order them individually, you can order your meal. You don't need to know how to order combo something. That's exactly what it is in here, all right? So back to our debugging. Now the program execution is over here. I pressed F5. And now if I bring my mouse over H, what do I see inside? Minus 8 billion, or 85 billion something. So I don't even know what that number is. Some garbage, because I did not initialize it, right? Now I'm over uh, scanf. If I press F10, it jumps over, which means it executes each line and it keeps going. F10, it means only execute this line and go to the next. This line, so I'm going to press F10. Now it wants to execute. You see, it comes to the command console. Now it's actually waiting for you to enter the number. Now I'm going to enter over here 23. And I hit Enter goes back to the IDE. I click on the IDE to activate it if it's not activated. Now if I bring my mouse over H, what do I see inside? 23. It means it read 23. Now, I am at the condition of if statement. I want to see if this is true or not. Highlight the whole thing. Bring the mouse over it. It says H greater than or equal to 19 is a true value. So it even tells you that. It literally spoon feeds you the logic. So it's a good thing to use this thing, especially when you have a complicated logic and you see something is wrong. You can run it step by step to see where the value is going bananas. OK? Go ahead. 
<laughs> Sorry, you left off. I didn't get to. So what? One more time. When you had your mouse over Mint and you saw that 8 million whatever number, uh -huh. you said you don't need to know that? That's garbage. You need to know garbage? <laughs> it's garbage. Like, uh, um, it's a random value. When you don't, um, when you actually create a variable, what happens? We talked about this when we were talking about types. When you create a variable, what happens? You say, uh, I don't know, double salary. So you want a double value, you name it salary. What happens? It goes someplace in memory, gets eight bytes, labels it as salary, and gives the handle to you. So you can use it while your program is running, right? That piece of memory had some number from calculations that it had in some other thing before. So it's not wiped out. It's garbage. It's not garbage. It's a number. But it is garbage because we didn't create it. It's a random number. We have no idea what it is. OK? So that is the number that you saw with it if you don't initialize it. All right? Yeah, and because, because the very first thing we are doing after that is to replace the value, then who cares? Yeah, yeah exactly. OK, I'm getting cold. Just give me two seconds. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So uh, now that it's true, because it's true, this block right after the if statement is going to happen which means it's just going to go into the block, do the print statement, and then it goes to the next if statement. Now, I have age 23, less than 19. If I highlight that one, what do I see in there? False. Because that is false, the entire block that is right after that will be skipped, and it jumps over next, and the program ends. Are we OK with this? Any problem? OK? Beautiful. So that's the if statement that we wanted to talk about. So let's save that and then continue. Now, obviously, Obviously, two if statements over here doesn't make sense. We always have it in, in English language. We say, if I'm at home, come in. Otherwise, come to my sister's. I'm there. Right? You have an if statement, and there is always, after this if statement, you tell what happens if that if, the if, if statement doesn't happen. We have that in C language. So. I had two if statements over here. If these two if, if, if statements are exact opposite of each other, then you can replace the second one with continuation of the if command that is an else. So I can simply put an else over here. OK? So an if statement is actually an if else command. If you don't have an else, fine. But if you want something happens, if that doesn't happen, which means the false part of the story, you put an else, and that's the second thing. There is one rule that we have, many rules that we have, guide start programming styles that we have, okay, that you have to follow in my class. When we have only one line after an if statement, the blocks are not necessary because these are grouping blocks. The curly bracket is to group few things and give them, this, give them the same priority. If it's only one, you can remove this. You can do that, all right? Not in my class. In my class, even if you have one, you have to always, always have the curly bracket. Why? It just looks good, and I like it. That's all, OK? Because I like it, and I'm the boss, you have to do it that way. All right? It's, again, I mentioned this before. You're going to go always to some company that you have a not job as a boss, and that not job is going to tell you what to do, and you have to follow the orders because he's your boss, right? Yes? In case you don't want to, 
So it's two pair of things that were not the same. Or the else state, or you can do other way, other way. After a case, open the curly bracket, close. You remove that one. Is it possible the second one for else you remove that? Yes, of course. For this one, no, because we have two. Because I want two things to happen if that condition goes false. See? Beautiful question. This I cannot remove. If I remove this one, I'm just confusing the heck out of everyone because let's do it, okay? Let's do it. So first let's run it like a human being, like a normal human being. Let's put that, let's put this thing over here. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. All right? So now I'm gonna run this. So I'm going to walk through it later, but I'm just going to run it to see. So how old are you? I'm going to say 12. It's going to say no drinks for you. How, did, how the heck did you get in, right? Now I'm going to run it again. Now it says how old are you? And I'm going to say I am 23. It's going to say what would you like to drink, right? Now I'm going to remove the first one and run it. It's going to work the exact same way. Absolutely no difference. So 12, what the heck, and so on and so forth. And if I put 23, the exact same thing is going to happen. 23, right? But if I run it for the, if I remove these two, now that's the worst thing you can do. It's gonna, so it, the way I indented those things, it looks like, it looks like as if else has two things after, right? But when I run it, control F5, if I say I am 12, that looks very fine. How old are you? I'm 12. No drinks for you. What, what, how the heck did you come in, right? Now I'm going to do the other one. Control F5. Oh. Control F5. Now I'm going to say I am 23. And I'm going to hit enter. What would you like to drink? And then how the heck did you get in? <laughs> I mean, did you understand what happened now? This is important for me, right? Okay. We understand what happened over here now, right? So which means if I remove these two right now, because there are two over here, the first one only belongs to else. The second one happens anyway. Okay? That's why always, always have your curly brackets, even if it's one line. Okay? And now I'm going to answer your question. Yes, what did you say? Give me line number. Close where? Nine and a half. Oh, oh, yeah, sure, of course. Uh huh. That's pretty much it. Yeah, still you have problem because you have two. You fix the problem for the first one. Second one remains the same. Second one just takes the first thing. Yeah, but if you do that, I'm gonna reject your assignment. It means you're sloppy. You put one for another, the other one not. So you always put it up for all of them. You can. Okay? I want you to understand, I want you to understand what is a bad handwriting. But then I'm going to tell you don't have it. Okay? It's bad to do it that way. And, and please don't do it. But know that even in a walkthrough or in tests, you may see that. You may see something that doesn't have a curly bracket. Be aware that what does it do? You don't do it yourself. If you are doing it in a test, fine. If you're doing it in an exam, fine. Because in exam, you only have two hours. I understand you want to quickly do, get on with it and get your mark. But things that you have five days, six days to do, things that you have three months to do, you have a project, you have an assignment, for that one, you have to do an amazing job. You have to give me something that has absolutely no flaw. On that one, I don't accept all, any of those. Quick stuff, you will see, I'm, I'm known to be very generous in marking when it comes to tests and assignments test and final exam, sorry, and quizzes too. But I'm very strict when it comes to workshops and, and assignments because you have time. You sit on a computer, you're working on a computer, you have time to look at your code. If you give me a sloppy thing, I will be very mad. All right, are we okay? Any problem down to here? Question? Suggestion? 
Objection? No, very good. All right. All right. Uh, That would be amazing. Beautiful thing to do. You can even do this. <sighs> See, this is all here. You put that one, you're hot, you take it off your coat. Sorry. <laughs> all right, so you can even do this. Something that you need to do. No. When you have two strings back to back, C automatically merges the two. This is the same thing as this. And they're all OK. The reason that I put two, because I wanted to show you the curly bracket and grouping their statements and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Are we OK? So I'm going to go back. So remember, whenever you put two, two strings back to back, so if you have something like this, and then you have something like this, and you have nothing in between, you only have spaces in between, C will merge them together as one. OK? <coughs> Questions here? Whichever you like. It's very fun. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, coding, see, coding style is where to use curly brackets, how to indent your code, how to choose your variable names. Um, later on, you're going to say, you're going to learn how to write functions, how to name your functions, how to name your file names. This, these are lo lo coding style. But how to write your printf, that's personal. Do whatever you want to do. OK? As the, be the judge. Take a look at it. If you go, mm, it means, OK, I'm going to go the same way. But if you see it, it's nice and good, then all right. If else. Now, when the codes get more complicated, I bring the code with me, OK? When it's not, I rather write it like this, because it forces me to slow down. And one of the most important, like there are researches about it, the, one of the most important things that uh, teaches people, gives people creative thought, is getting bored. OK? So when I am writing a code and I am slow, and you can come on, write that if statement. Just Thinking of that imprints it in your memories. It's my experience of 20 years. Okay, so writing it live in class, the reason I'm telling you is that the next thing I'm going to do is a little boring. <laughs> okay, okay, so now we know what is if else statement. Let's uh, change that thing a little and make it a little more uh, nice. Say, We want to write a program uh, that tells the students what is its letter grade. So you got, you got to get that. the students going to tell you I got seventy five percent. You're going to tell them that you got B, right? Uh, we're not going to have any pluses in this. So I don't want to go too big. So it's like A, A plus, A, B, C, D, and F. Okay, that's all we have. So we want, so we want when, this, when the student says, I am like, how much did you get? I'm going to say 91%, that's an A plus. We're going to tell them you got A plus. Are we OK with this? So we're going to do this. So the first thing we're going to do, we've got to get a mark from the student, right? So I'm going to create an integer for that, and I'm going to say int mark. That's what I'm going to get from the student, right? Now the next thing I want to do, I want to actually ask the student to uh, tell me what the mark is. Everything step by step, in detail, remember that. So printf, I'm going to say, oh, what is your mark out of 100? 
And then I'm going to read an integer and put it in where? Who said Mark? Address of Mark. <laughs> Address of Mark. Bad boy you are. Address of Mark. Remember? Ampersand. Mark, we don't say ampersand. The only person who's allowed to say ampersand is me. You say address of, right? Okay? Address of mark. So we are putting in an address of mark. So we've got to put in an address of mark, and then we have to go through testing the values and see what they are. So uh, if the value that the user is entering is under if it's between 0 and 50, then that would be uh, uh, enough. OK, so I'm going to say if. Oh. So I'm going to say if mark is. So how do we say it? Can somebody say it for me? Say in English, I want to see what is if. What is, uh, uh, how do we find out if a mark is if, uh, f? Uh -huh, thank you. Uh, uh, mark is less than, if mark is less than 50. Or. Uh -huh. Or, I, I wanted to hear that. Or. Or greater than zero. Thank you very much. So that's what I wanted to see. So I want to say if mark is greater than zero or. Or mark is less than 50. Now let's see what happens over here. Is it or? If it's you, when you think about it, you literally mention all the numbers in the world because they are either more than zero or less than. So we want it and, right? Beautiful. OK, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to go through. OK, so, so if it is greater than that one or yeah, and less than 50, then in here I'm going to say your mark is F, right? Now, if. I can't say else because I have five different things, right? I have to go for the other one. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say if. But what is the next thing? If mark is greater than or equal to 50 and mark is less than what? 60. Then what's going to be the mark? Your mark is C, right? D. And I am the person who's marking you guys. You should be very happy. Are we OK with this? Now, take a look. I am saying, so after these if statements, and I'm going to write more if statements, right? Your mark is, your mark is, so the only things that is different is F and D over here, right? Even dot and backslash N are the same, correct? So why do you keep printing it over and over and over and over? All I need to do is do this. Put it right beforehand and say your mark is. And in here I just say F. And then in here I'm going to say print F dot backslash n, right? And even I remove that one, correct? And I can do the same thing over here and do the same thing over here. Isn't that easier? OK? You know, there is actually a function in standard input that only prints one character. The name of that function is put cat. Instead of printf, we could say put car and put the D with single quotes in it. OK, we're going to learn that in, at the end of the semester when we go to, to library function. 
but just for the for for fun of it i'm just going to make the f put care so in here i'm going to say put care f because it's a single character you don't need so you could have done that it, it's not formatted it only prints it, its job is just to print the character it doesn't do anything else okay so we could have done that i'm not going to do it just letting you know that that exists okay so I have D, and after D I have, what do I have next? And after C I have an A and A plus, correct? All right, I'm lazy, sorry, I did it this way. So if it's greater than or equal to 60 and less than 70, then it's going to be a C. If it's greater than or equal to 70, and less than 80, that's a B. If it's greater than or equal to 80 and less than 90, that's an A. Seneca used to be like this, I think a year ago. Lately, we brought B plus and C plus and things like that. We didn't have that one. Yes. Oh, uh, let me pause this. <laughs> so now that I have this one, and the last one is A+. Plus. See, I could put put care. I could put put care for all these things, but I couldn't put it for the last one. Because last one is two characters. Put care cannot print two characters. It prints only one character. Yes? Uh, shouldn't be the last one uh, less than an equal? Thank you. That was another bug that I was intended to do. I have good students. That's nice. So. Yeah, I wanted to, to leave a bug and say, okay, the, um, our program has a bug. It doesn't know what is 100 and so on and so forth. But are we okay with this? All right. So now if I run this beautiful program of mine, what is your mark? And if I say over here 72, it's going to give me your mark is B. Okay? It's all if statements. I'm not going to walk through. It's just, okay? Actually, it's not a bad idea to walk through it once. Let me show you why. Okay? Now, I'm going to walk through this one not with a stop sign. I'm not going to put the stop sign and press Control F5, uh, press F5. I'm just going to press F10 right from the beginning. See, the program is not even running. F10 was to execute one line, right? So if you press F10, it compiles and runs and everything and hop stands right at the beginning of your program. So you want to start from right from the beginning. That's when you want to do it that way. You, you do it like that. So I'll bring this one over here. I just want to show you what happens. So mark is garbage. It reads the mark. And then in here I'm going to put over what, uh, well, um, I don't know, uh, 82. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter. When I hit enter, what happens? Take a look. Checks the first. Oh, it says your mark is, and check the, checks the first one, then checks the next one. One by one is checking. So if I actually bring it over here right now, it actually checks the whole condition over here, and the condition is false. Then it goes to the next one, and this condition is true, right? And then it prints it, and it still, it printed the result. So it knows what the result is. Stupid thing is still checking the next one. Because it doesn't know, it's just the computer, right? So because we have the conditions, it's, uh, the result is found. We're done. Bye-bye. Let's go. It doesn't know. It actually checks the next one, too. Of course, because it's false, it's not going to print it, but still checks it. OK, it's false. Of course, it's not going to run it, but it checks it and runs it. OK, so how do we fix that problem? I'm going to show you this, and you're going to hate me for it, but hey, what can I do? I'm gonna, and then I'm going to give you a solution for it. So if it finds the first one, my question is this. If it finds the first one, does it need to check the rest? It doesn't need to check the rest, right? So what I can do, I can simply put the rest of these stuff. Uh, let me just. Select one of many bad. 
So it's a bad one, OK? So what I'm going to do, so if it happens, I don't want the rest to happen. So I can put the rest of the stuff inside of the else of the first one, right? So I can say, if it's if, if it's that one and you found f, fine. Otherwise, do this, correct? So everything's going to go in else, correct? So if, if f happens, nothing's going to happen. Pa! It comes over here. If that doesn't happen, then it comes to else. Check this one. If D happens, does it need to check the rest? No. Else. Correct? If D doesn't happen, it checks comes to else, correct? It checks the first one. If it happens, the rest doesn't need to happen, right? So that goes to an else. This is called nested if, if else statement. And the same thing happens as, as B. If B happens, the rest we don't need to check. Correct? And if that doesn't happen, then what do we do? Correct? And if this doesn't happen, what happens? If it is not between 0 and 50, it is not between 50 and 60, it's not between 60 and 70, it's not between 70 and 80, it's not between 80 and 90, it's not between 90 and 100, then what is it? It's an invalid mark, right? So now I can actually say printf invalid. Correct? Now my code is slightly more efficient, which means if actually it comes and finds this one, then the rest won't happen anymore. See? I'm going to put an, the worst case scenario is for an invalid mark, a mark that is completely wrong. OK? Let's try it. I'm going to walk through it. So don't be, don't be overwhelmed with the no. Remember I told you the tab I'm using too? That's the reason. If you had eight characters for tab, you know where we're we now? <laughs> you know? So <coughs> apologies. All right. So. Now I'm going to run it. Yeah. Print. Uh, now I'm going to put over here a 65. Then I hit enter. So what happens? It comes in here. It is 65, so this is false, right? Because it's false, it goes to the else part of the if statement, correct? So it comes to else. So it checks this one. Is it between 50 and 60? No. See, it goes to the else part of that if statement, that is this one. Then it checks this one. Is it between that one and that one? Yes, it is. It goes over there, print C, correct? And the rest of the thing that is else is completely skipped. And it jumps right to the end. So those conditions won't be checked. It's much faster. OK? It's exactly two times faster than the other one, OK? If all the marks are repeated to the number of, OK. But anyway, so, so that's that. And if the worst case scenario is for it to be invalid, uh, which means it's got, everything's going to go false, 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 false until it reaches to that invalid one. So if I do control F5 over here, what is uh, your mark out of? And I'm going to say over here. Uh, and it's going to see your mark is invalid. All right? Are we OK with this? Although valid, but that's awful. 
It's really awful. Come on, for heaven's sake, take a look. It's like how many else they I'm going bananas. So because of this, so 0, 4 nested if else nested if else 4 1 4 select <laughs> select one of many dot c wow all right i'm just naming it so so we can see what's going on so that's that one now if i actually take a look at this code let's say one or more cancel cancel what are you talking about okay are we okay now yes I know, I'm going to talk about it right now. Okay, tell me. This condition, like saying in C language, you are not allowed to use if else more than two or three or four. There is condition or? No, 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 no. You can put five million of it, but not more than five million. I'm kidding. You can, there is no limit. The limit is your memory. The limit. You can replace it by different numbers. Yeah, but it, yeah. But that there is no there is no limit to how mu how how many times you can nest the command. There is no limit. Okay, the limit when I say the limit is your memory is that the compiler w to translate this compiler needs memory. Okay, to translate your code compiler needs memory. If it doesn't run out of memory, you're fine. It's not slow down. It, it, There is no limit. There is no limit. There is no limit. All right. Now, how do we fix this problem? They said, OK, if there is such a scenario, I'm going to, we're going to make your life easy. We're going to remove this completely like that. And we call it an ELSIF. So essentially, I'm going to do it. I'm going to first fix it and then show it to you. Should I blank the screen? Don't even look at it. Let me finish it and you'll see what, I'm, what I did. You're going to see the final result and you're going to go, aha! Uh, that needs to be done. Okay, you see the formatting sucks now? Right? I'm going to go to Edit, Advanced, Format Document, Pooh, and it formatted the document. Okay? Magic. Now take a look. This is called an ELSIF, and the final result is exactly the same thing, the ELSIF system. Okay? So if ELSIF. Okay? ELSIF is selection of one of many. Whenever you have to nest it so much, you don't need to. You can use ELSIF. Okay? So you say if this, else if this, else if this, else if this, else if this, and an else at the end. Doing such a thing, one of many conditions will happen. That's the construct for it. And this works exactly like the other one. So you have 50 different conditions, and you want to have a radio button effect. You know what a radio button is? You pick one and everything else pops out. You pick one, one selection out of many. Whenever you have something like that, this is your, your friend. So you put conditions. If one of the, condi the first condition that meets the criteria, the rest will be ignored. That's exactly the same effect. So remember that. If, condition, else if, condition, else if, condition, any of them. But when we look at this, we're going to see that this is not actually, um, like we have some extra things over here that we don't need to do. OK? I'm saying if it's greater than zero and less than 50, right? Greater than zero and less than 50. If that's not the case, then it has to be greater than 50, right? Correct? If that's the case, why do I need to check it to see be greater than 50? Right? Then I'm saying, if it's less than 50, it's F, right? 
If it's less than 60, if it's not less than 50, it's greater than 50, right? Now all I need to do is to check to see if it's less than 60. So if it's not less than 60, it's greater than 60, right? Now all I need to do is to see if it's less than 70. And then I need to see if it's less than 80. And then I need to see if it's less than 90. And then I have to see if it's less than 100. Else invalid, that's kind of, now this is going to be a little bit of a problem in here. Reason is that there is a bug in here. Can somebody tell me what is the bug? That's F. Which, is it going to know it by itself? Like, no, well, what do you mean by itself? Okay, like you, so you're, so saying thir so you're saying 30. No, less than 50, it will print F. And then less than 60, it will print D, but also 50 uh, or, or 30 or whatever is less than 60. Oh, oh no, remember, it's because of else if it, let's try it, OK? I'll tell you what the bug is. So let's, let's put over here 65. Is that good? Okay, so if I actually run this program, and I'm going to put 65 in here, so, so I'm going to come over here, mark is 65, hit enter, so it comes over here. And mark is 65, so this is false. Because it's false, it comes to else, else if. It comes in here. Is mark less than 60? No, correct? It's false. It is not less than 60. So it goes to else. Is mark less than 70? Yes. So it prints C and skips the rest because they all rest behind an else. It jumps and comes to print. That's the idea is else of else if. If any of the conditions meet, the rest will be completely gone. So I think that's it. Let's see if we are OK. Stop. So let's test it. I'm going to say I'm checking everything. So let's check uh, 200. If it's 200, it's invalid. Control F5. If it's minus 20, it is. Whoops. What did I do wrong? Remember I removed the conditions before? I tried to play smart at that thing. OK. Because minus 20 is still less than 60, it accepts it, right? So that's why I have to, 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 to make sure everything's OK and correct and everything, I have to add another condition in here saying if mark, that's the bug, mark is less than 0, printf invalid 2. Now I can put it over here. So if I'm here, then it is, if it's not less than 0, it's greater than 0. Now it's going to get fixed. Now negatives are, are uh, oh, and I forgot an else over there. My apologies. Else. If, are we OK? So remember, yes. Yes, yes. So we specify zero and sixty. What? Why it gave? Why it gave you D? Because the first one went false. Correct. Let me go back to what it was before. Control Z. I should have walked through it. Sorry. I'm gonna bring it back to what it was to the correct one again. Come on. This is all the mistakes I made. Okay. So mark is what? Minus 20, correct? Let's walk through it. Is minus 20 greater than 0 and less than 50? 
Why are you doing this? Is minus 20 greater than 0? No. So this is false, correct? Because it's false, the else happens, correct? Is minus 20 less than 60? Yes. D is going to get printed. That's the bug. Because I removed the mark greater than 50 and everything from here to make the condition easier, I essentially removed the safeguard for negative numbers for rest of the conditions. If we change the and to or. No, no, so don't try to. <laughs> we come to that position. If you make this one or, you're saying greater than, it means all numbers in the world. You're saying the numbers that are greater than zero, or the numbers who are great less than 50, that's all the numbers in the world. The only way is to, is to, uh, to add one more if statement. And that's me doing it again. And removing that one. All right? Oh. And the else. OK? Now it's going to work. Do we understand else if, hopefully? All right. <clears throat> really five minutes. Break. Does anybody need break? Let's first ask this. Oh, of course you do, because I have to give your quizzes back. Pause the recording. <laughs> so what I did not record over here, I'm going to explain again. When you write an if statement over here, when you execute it, it happens only once, as we see over here. But if we change that if statement to a while loop, what happens is that if the condition is correct, indefinitely it's going to run forever. And we're going to use that while loop to do whatever you want to do. OK, now I explain. Now you tell me. Of course, when you write a bigger program, it takes quite a bit of space. Yeah, mm. so now when you're running that exact program, though, with the, where it keeps on writing this huh? over and over again, while it's running, is it taking up more space? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you. Um, I hate to answer you right now because it's way above your pay grade. But what you're talking about is called the memory leak. If inside that loop I keep asking for computer to give me memory, then it's going to accumulate. So there is no such thing. You're not, you know that in, in next semester, not this semester. OK? Now, let me finish this. OK. Now I can use this as an opportunity. I have this loop over here that keeps running, right? So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go that bartender thingy that I had. Where's my bartender? It was here, right? So I'm going to take that bartender thingy that I had, you see? I'm going to copy it right over here and put it right inside this loop. You see this loop that I, oops, that I created, the while loop that I have over here? I'm going to put it right over here. And let's take the variable out because it has to be at the beginning of the program. So now I have a while loop around, around my program that was asking for one customer. OK? Are we OK with that? Now, it's A23. I'm going to take that thing off. And I'm just going to put one over here. Since it's going to be true, I'm just going to see. So this is an endless loop, which means this program never ends. It's a bartender that never goes home. OK? So if I run this program now, the whole bartender program of mine gets repeated over and over and over and over and over. Correct? Correct? So if I run this control F5, how old are you? I'm going to say 23. What would you like? Again, ask me, how old are you? It's doing it again. Now I'm going to say 12. It's going to say no drink. What the, like, how the heck did you come in, right? Then I'm going to say 56, same thing. So it keeps going and going and going and going, right? 
Now, what I can do over here is this. Instead of just putting one or some variable over here, I'm going to create a meaningful variable. I want to, I want to keep doing this until I'm done, right? So I'm going to just use that. I'm going to say, I'm going to create an integer, and I'm going to call it done. Am I done now? No. So I'm going to put false in it. So initialization, who wanted to know? OK? Because I am using it immediately. Now in here, I'm going to say, OK. <clears throat> now somebody tell me, what should I put over there? While what? I keep going. While I am? While? No, 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 no. English, don't give me C language. While? Not done. While? Not done, correct? So I'm going to say while? Not done. Exactly, right? Do this. And then at the ending here, I'm going to say printf. Done? I'm asking. And I'm going to say over here, scanf. And I'm going to, because we are at primitive stage over here, I'm going to put 1 and 0. It means give me 1 or 0 for done or not. And in here, I'm going to say percent %d and address of done. So what happens is that at the end of each question, are you done? OK. So control F5. So in here, I'm going to say, how old are you? I'm going to say 34. What would you like to drink? Done? I'm going to say no. I'm going to put zero. OK, zero is no, right? Welcome to everyone. How old are you? I'm going to say 12. No drinks, OK? Done? Now I'm going to say one and hit enter. Press any key to continue. We're done, OK? So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to be polite. At the end of the loop, I'm going to say printf <coughs> goodbye. And go to new line. So when I actually finish the program, so when I actually run the program, I'm going to say 34. Uh, no, I'm not done. And do like that. No, I'm not done. And do like this. No, I'm going to say done. And it's going to say goodbye to me. And the program ends. Are we OK with this? That's how you repeat. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you're, like in here, you're talking about, right? You're, you're saying like when, when I ask, are you done, when the user enters one, it overwrites what it had before, correct? So it's zero. It comes in. It says, are you done? The person says, yes. So the one goes into done. The done will be set to one. Comes over here. The condition is false. Boom, it goes off. Yes. How can I answer this question? Why there are so many? I don't know. Can I have less? Can you remove one of them? Give me line number. Uh, 19. Remove 19. Three to twenty-three. Three to remove what? The curly brackets? Yeah. Curly brackets group things. You are telling to while I want this part to get repeated. If you remove this, how does it know where is the end of the while? In this else, if I remove this, how does it know where is the end of the while? OK? Now, loops are not always like this. Loops are also used. 0, 6, uh, uh, while loop, while dot c. OK? Loops are not always for, used for, like, for this. They are, they are ended with calculations, too. For example, I can say integer length, printf, 
how long would you like the line to be? So what do I do? In here I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to create an index, integer i, uh, for the loop. Now in here I'm going to say while i less than length. And in here I'm going to say printf. I'm going to draw a line using a dash. And then I'm going to add one to i. Okay, my program now. What does it say? Of course, I have to read the length, so I'm going to say scanf percent d address of length. Okay, now when I run this beautiful program of mine, what does it do? How old are you? I changed the wrong file. X, my apologies. Uh, X. I changed the wrong file, my apologies, give me two seconds, two seconds. Wrong source file. Yeah, one more time. So now if I actually run this, it's going to tell me length is wrong. Let me fix this. Run it one more time. If I know how long... Now, if I say 40, there's a line for 40 and a goodbye at the end. Okay? Now, if I run it again, if I say 70, I have a line that is 70. Okay? And, so, um, and it's a good idea to do a printf at the end. So I go to new line. Correct? So these type of loops that are changed conditionally, what happens is, uh, like, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, ends with calculation done to it, have a controlled number of repetition. It's not that you always ask the user when you want to end. I want the line to be two characters long, and when I run this program, I'm going to say two, and it's only be two characters long. And that's what the loop does. So loops are not always are done to, to ask users to repeat what they want to do, but also follow a uh, 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 kind of a logic to perform a single task, depending on what you want to do. And if you want, we could simply take the while loop that we had in the other one, take this part in, while not done thingy, and put it right at the beginning of it. So take the age out. And I'm going to simply add this one right at the end. So I'm going to put that one in another loop and add the question at the end. And the exact same program is now is going to get repeated over and over exactly like the other one. How long is it going to be? I'm going to say 34. It draws it done. I'm going to say no. How long is it going to be? I'm going to say 68. Now I have a, oh, exact same line. What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Oh, see, I forgot to reset uh, one, uh, i to 0. i every single time has to get 0 at the beginning. Initialization happens only once at the beginning. I want to repeat it over here. I made that mistake. So now if I run it, now 35, no. I'm going to put over here 67, longer one, no. I'm going to put two, and I'm going to put one, and I'm gone. OK? And that's repetition. What you need right now, I'm going to stop recording right now.